yesterday morning They let me know you were gone Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you to those of you who have supported my channel by liking and subscribing. Your support allows me to continue to bring you fountain pen reviews as I am unsponsored on this channel, so thanks. A while ago I was taken to task by a viewer for repeating a pen review just because I got a new one in a new color. They felt a new color was not a good reason for another review. Well, be prepared to take me to task again because here comes another review of a Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero. I think viewers enjoy any opportunity to view pen porn, even if it's just a new finish. In fact, especially if it's a new finish or a color. But if you're still insisting on being pendantic, here are two empirical reasons for doing a new review. One. This is a new 2021 Momento Zero, and Leonardo has made changes since January 1st, 2021. Two, there are changes to the box as well. And three, well, this is my YouTube channel, and I'll do what I damn well please, so. Mm. Mm. This is the 2021 Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero, in a new color, Prugna which translated from the Italian means pregnant plum. I hope this one has babies because I love it. And today I want to compare the redesigned 2021 Momento Zero with my 2020 Blue Hawaii Momento Zero. And I'll also compare it with the Momento Zero Grande. So let's be pendantic together, shall we? Right now. <music> It's an NLD day today. That's New Leonardo Day. And I just received this package from DHL on my doorstep. And before I unbox this New Leonardo, I want to talk about DHL a moment. Just to give everybody a heads up on what their pricing structure is. Some vendors don't give you a choice. If you're uh, choosing international shipping, you have to go with a particular company. But if you've got choices, uh, UPS or DHL or uh, Federal Express or whatever it might be. DHL might look like it's the least expensive option, but there are some hidden charges. The number of times I've received packages from international vendors uh, from DHL, um, I've always received a notification that I had to pay uh, duty and tax. Now this is not unusual, people do pay duty and tax. Duty! I was fully expecting that. But uh, I've just seen a CBC article uh, on a woman from Ontario who had um, items shipped overseas and they were very low expense items and she was paying these extra charges to get her item and she called it ransom. So for my expenses here I paid about $35 shipping to Applebaum for this item. And then it came into the country and DHL sent me a message that I owed another $25 Canadian I do apologize to you bastard! Uh, for what they called duty, duty and taxes. But the details under that are that there's no duty whatsoever from Canada, uh, but the tax was about $7 and change, seven and a quarter or something. And the remaining charge was all DHL. <laughs> Service fees or whatever, filling out forms. So DHL is offloading uh, part of their shipping cost uh, onto the consumer after the fact. And you don't know what that is until you get it. And uh, then you have to pay the ransom fee uh, to get your, uh, your item delivered to you. you Just a heads up for those of you that use DHL that they back end some of that cost of shipping and so it ends up being very expensive um, uh, shipping options. I'll just keep that in mind. And let's open this package up and see what's in it. I'm fully expecting a green box. 
And there's my green box. I'm glad it comes in a big box. It's been banged around a bit. Well, I got a nice note from Annabelle. Hey Douglas, enjoy your new pen. Very nice. This pen has been worked on in-house by nib specialist Annabelle. Thank you, Annabelle. I asked for them specifically to work on this pen for me. Well, I've got a uh, special edition storyboard. It's a nice added gift. And I have another Stroop waffle. And here's the box. They're always so nicely wrapped. The sticker from Apple Bomb. And here we have the Leonardo. Fatto a mano Italia in Italia, which means made in Italy, handmade in Italy. And there's the black embossed Leonardo. Very classy. And there is yet another box inside. And here is the padded case. And let's open it up. And there's our pen. Padded Leonardo case. And the pen in its condom. This is the color called Prugna. Prugna, I don't know whether I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's um, Italian for plum. And it is just gorgeous. Get rid of this tag. There we go. And see it next. It's uh, much more muted than the blue Hawaii is, but it's no less stunning. And this one is 357. And this has the rose gold trim. So let's put it up next to. There we go. You can see the difference in the in the gold. And I thought this would make a really nice match with uh, Iroshizuku Yamabudo. And this pen is just gorgeous. I can't wait to write with it and then review it. Something to look forward to. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. First, let's look at the differences between the 2020 and the 2021 Memento Zero. We'll start with the packaging here because packaging and presentation is really, really important. There are a few minor changes in the packaging, starting with the outer sleeve. They've added some text to the 2021 with this dot dot dot. More than 45 years of experience from father to son. And the story goes on dot dot dot. And an added graphic to the back that says 100% cento percento italiano, which means not made in China. On the inside, there are some differences as well. There is an added tassel to the 2021 pen, where the 2020 didn't have the tassel. And that tassel has the Leonardo wings on it. The booklets are identical, except for the 2020 model is about three millimeters wider which makes it that much easier to close the lid on it. And then there's a difference in the warranty cards. The 2020 says made in Italy and the 2021 adds the Instagram and Facebook um, addresses, which are still the best way to get in touch with Salvatore as he handles both of these accounts. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Just want to pause here for a moment and focus in on these two cards. I'm noticing this while I'm editing. 
The one here says made in Italy and under my thumb it says original quality, worked by hand from a solid bar, guaranteed for life against any manufacturing defect. And the 2021 has all the social information, but nowhere does it say that it is guaranteed for life or guaranteed at all. So that's interesting. I'm going to put a note in to uh, Salvatore on Facebook and see if he answers before I publish this. So I sent a Facebook message to Salvatore and asked him about warranty and also about the seeming lack of 14 karat gold nib options on the 2021 Momento Zero and Forori lines and I talk about that later in the video. He graciously answered my questions within eight hours. Here's what he said. Dear Douglas, thanks for your message and for the review. I'm sure it will be perfect as always. Haha. <laughs> Some points to clarify about Leonardo collections and the nibs. A. We are only using Yovo, stop with Bach. All the pens around the shops with Bach nibs are old productions. B. We changed the note within the guarantee. Now there are addresses of the social networks, but in any case, our policy provides for a lifetime guarantee against any manufacturing defect. This will also be communicated a lot on our new website. C. Even the Forore will now be assembled with Yovo nib. Steel and gold have the same design. Obviously the gold one has the writing 14 karat gold 585 and the letter on the tip, fine, medium, broad, etc. on the front art and the steel on the side. This is all good news and thank you for your prompt reply, Salvatore. This is what I had suspected and had been told by Salvatore previously that on January 1st, 2021, Leonardo stopped using Bach and switched all production to Yovo. The retailers will still have stock of the Bach nib pens until they've sold them all. So again, check with your retailer. Leonardo continues to warranty the pens for life against defects as they had previously, and they are building a new website, which is great news. Plus, Yovo 14 karat gold nibs are available even though the online retailers I've seen don't show that option. So again, speak to your retailer about availability and pricing. It might actually take some time for the online retailers to change their websites. We now return you to the previous broadcast. Please stand by for further details. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. Those are the changes in the packaging. Now let's look at the pens. Here is my 2020 Momento Zero Blue Hawaii and this is the 2021 Momento Zero Purugna. And Purugna is number 357. These are numbered but not limited editions. Leonardo relaunched the Momento Zero for 2021 in nine finishes including two new colors this Purugna and Alga. The other colors are Blue Hawaii Positano, Sorrento, Horn, Lavanda, Iride, and Pietra Marina. All of the 2021 Momento Zero colors are available in three different hardware finishes, rhodium, gold, and rose gold plated. They come in EF, F, M, B, and 1.1 stub steel nibs. The two new colors, Prugna and Alga, are both spaghetti resins, like the Blue Hawaii. I assume that means it is a stacked acrylic resin and not that there's any pasta content, al dente or otherwise. Now kindly remove that spaghetti from my poker face. <laughs> the hell is so funny? <laughs> it's not spaghetti, it's linguine. <laughs> Now it's garbage. I should also note that the Momento Zero used to have gold nib options, but they don't seem to be there any longer. You can get gold nib options with the grande size pens, but I don't see those options anymore for the standard size Ferrore or Momento Zero. I might be wrong about that, but I can't find them on retail sites. Overall, these two pens are nearly identical except for the color. 
but there are four main differences between the 2020 and the 2021. The first is on the outside of the pen and it is subtle. The clip on the 2021 is slimmer than the previous design. In fact, this is the clip from the Momento Zero Grande. I originally thought the slimmer clip on the Grande looked odd on that size pen, but I've since relented and agree that it is very pleasing to the eye. And now with the slimmer clip on the Momento Zero standard size pen, I must admit, it's a nice improvement giving the pen a sleeker, more refined look. You'll also notice that the round flat part where the roller is attached is also slightly different in shape. A square look, which is nice. For the next and most important change, we have to open the hood. The uncapping of the pen is the same one turn for both pens. Here is the most important change to the Leonardo Momento Zero. And it isn't only on this model, but across all models of Leonardo. As of January 1st, 2021, all Leonardo pens will be fitted with Yovo rather than Bach nibs. Retailers will still be clearing out stock for the next several months. So if it's important to you to have a Bach or a Yovo, speak to your retailer about it before you order. I announced this change back in November with my review of the Ferrari Grande. Salvatore indicated to me that he felt that he would get more consistency with Yovo, and even though he and his family had a relationship with Bach going back to the Delta pen days, his customer experience is more important. Let's look at them side by side here. Here is the Bach 2020 on the left and the Yovo 2021 on the right. You can see that the engravings have changed. The 2020 had the nib size on the top of the nib, where the 2021 has smaller engravings and has omitted the Officina Italiana words in favor of just the wings, Leonardo and Italy. And the Leonardo Yovo nib has the size on the side of the nib. And the Leonardo Yovo nibs have this simple engraved line border on them. There are some ramifications to making this change and not just in customer loyalty and preference for either Bach or Yovo. You cannot retrofit a Leonardo Yovo nib to a Leonardo pen that was made for Bach. The nib unit screw threads are different. I mentioned in my Ferrari Grande video that you could possibly pull the Bach nib out of a Bach designed pen and put a, a Yovo in it um, using the Bach feed and collar. But it seems that this isn't possible either. Goldspot Pens actually gave it a try and it doesn't work. The reverse doesn't work either. You can't put a Bach nib into a Leonardo fitted with a Yovo nib. Let's take a moment to look at a Leonardo Yovo steel nib next to a stock Yovo steel nib here on my Ranga 4C here on the left. You'll note that Leonardo has made arrangements with Yovo to send them stock nib units that are unadorned with Yovo's standard filigree scroll work. This version I got from Salvatore back in October still has the Yovo scroll work. I'm glad they've gone with the cleaner look. When Salvatore sent me two Yovo nibs to replace the two Bach nibs I had purchased with my Blue Hawaii, he sent the nib, feed, collar, and section because of the different screw threads. You can see what the nib would have looked like if Salvatore had kept the stock scroll work from Yovo. And now let's open the section on the 2020 and you'll see another uh, big change from 2020 and that is that the 2021 now have a metal nozzle part of the section whereas the 2020 is all resin. This definitely adds to the weight as the new model is 2.5 grams heavier than the 2020. I'm sure there's some reasoning behind this. It could be anything from an efficiency in manufacturing to a better seal between the section and the screw and converter, or even the new Yovo nib unit. However, it does bring the look of the Momento Zero closer to its imitator, the Moonman M800 now, doesn't it? The converter is still the same and it screws into the section, so it is very secure, and it has the extended piston rod, uh, this time finished in rose gold to match the rest of the hardware, which is nice. And it's extended so that you can access that converter 
after the blind cap on the back, like all the other Memento Zeros. Some say this is a useless feature, but I tend to use it a lot when I want to prime the feed. I don't use it for filling because I syringe fill my converters anyway. Does the switch from Bach to Yovo improve the pen? Well, you're going to get a wide variety of opinions about that. There are devotees on both sides of that argument. I'm partial to Yovo just because of my personal experience, and I think that's all anyone can go on. I've had a few Bach nibs, and none of them worked well without nib customization. All of the Yovo nibs I've owned have been superb. So, is it the nib itself? I don't think so, because this nib on my Blue Hawaii is a Bach, and it's my favorite nib in my collection. Of course, it is a custom ground architect italic made by Jack Hernandez. And that's my point. Pardon the pun. Ah, Mrs. Bialis Falcon Bloom, I presume. <laughs> Forgive the pun. <laughs> what pun? Shut up, he thinks he's witty. Any steel nib can be made to write well if it's given individual attention. So we're talking about quality control more than anything else. Some retailers like Applebaum will check and tune the nib for you before they ship it. Some penny manufacturers like Lamy will check every nib before they ship to the retailers. So it all comes down to capacity and quality control. Leonardo is trying to raise the quality control of their nibs by switching to a company that seems to have a more consistent output of nibs and therefore Leonardo's quality checking is probably less intense. Let's take a moment, pardon the pun, you keep using the horn. I don't think it means what you think it means. To look at the differences between the grande size Momento Zero and the standard size and their respective features. Here is my Momento Zero Grande Dark Hawaii. The Memento Zero itself is already a good size and the Grande is definitely an oversized pen. It is way too long to be used posted. Although you can write with it posted, it is very long. Where the regular size Momento Zero can be used posted or unposted comfortably. Other than size, the big differences between the Standard and the Grande are that the Grande is a piston filler and has an in-house ebonite feed. The nib and feed on the Grande are not removable and there is no ink window to see the ink capacity. That means if you want to clean out the Grande pen for an ink change, you're going to be cranking that piston over and over again in water until the pen runs clear and then you have to let it dry out before filling it again. I bought this pen from Applebaum and paid $227.19 Canadian and that's after my 15% discount. You can get a 10% discount by using the code FRIEND, F-R-I-E-N-D, at checkout. But you can get the full 15% discount by simply posting a review on Yoast website after your purchase. And that 15% would be for your next purchase. That's a pretty easy thing to do for an extra 5% off. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here we are with the 2021 Leonardo Momento Zero Perugna with a 2020 Leonardo Momento Zero Blue Hawaii, a 2020 Leonardo Furore Salt, a Moonman M800 Amber, and a 2020 Leonardo Momento Zero Grande in Dark Hawaii. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. These are all Bach nibs with the exception of the Momento Zero Prugna, which is a Yovo. The Blue Hawaii and the Furore are both Bach nibs, but they were cut into uh, Architect Italics by Jack Hernandez. And the Moonman M800 Bach nib was customized by me to write properly. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Leonardo Officina 
Italiana. Momento. Zero. And it has a medium steel Yovo nib. Let's check the wetness. This nib is very wet indeed. This nib was tuned by Applebaum before it was shipped at my request, and it was tuned by Annabelle. Thank you very much, Annabelle. She did a lovely job. The nib is very, very smooth. And the ink today is Iroshizuku Yamabudo, which I think is a very nice match for this pen. Here are some close matches with Yamabudo from Inkswatch.com. That's the line variation. That's no pressure. That's a little bit of pressure. And you see it flexes a little bit, but this is not a flex nib, and it is very stiff. I wouldn't even say it has any bounce to it. Comparing this line to my Richard Binder chart, it is a 0.6 millimeter line, which is a Western medium, no surprise, and a Japanese medium to broad. And for our quote, And for some reverse writing, it's not quite as smooth as the other glassy side, but it actually writes, and it writes with a bit thinner line. So that's a possibility. And some quick writing. No issues whatsoever. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, if I didn't like the Memento Zero, I wouldn't now have two of them. And I wouldn't have three Moon Man copies either. And one of these has a Bach nib and the other two have, surprise, surprise, Pen BBS nibs. There's just so much to like about this fountain pen. On the Memento Zeros, I just love the look of that spaghetti resin. And this new plum color is so rich and burgundy. The rose gold hardware is a perfect match for this color as well. The new Yovo nib writes like butter, and the pen is just perfect for my hand, posted or unposted. Yes, the Grande is a bigger pen and is a piston filler with an ebonite feed, but the Memento Zero has a nib that writes like glass, is very comfortable and balanced and is drop dead gorgeous. It comes in nine different colors with five nib options and three hardware options. There's also a new series called the Pura, which is a frosted translucent acrylic in three colors, blue, orange, and gray. And finally, I have to say something about Leonardo as a company. As far as I know, this is the third generation of the flagship Leonardo pen the Memento Zero since its inception. I know the first generation only had two cap rings on it and some had piston filler options. I'm not totally up on my Leonardo history. But in only five years, Salvatore has made design refinements and revisions to his flagship pen model to improve the design and please his customers. How many other pen companies listen to the customers like that? 
Plus, even though I think any pen over $50 is expensive, I now own five Leonardos, and I buy these pens with my own money, and I'm on a fixed income. You notice I don't own a Montblanc. I guess what I'm trying to say is that Leonardo makes it possible for me to get into the ballpark of top-tier handmade fountain pens. And there seem to be hundreds of variations, special resins, celluloids, limited editions, flex nib options, and custom collaborations on the acrylics going on with Leonardo. I'm on the Leonardo Facebook page and I'm seeing those variations all the time and some of them are just stunning. Not just in their looks, but also in their prices. There are Leonardos that are thousands of dollars and up there with the most expensive and exquisite Viscontis and Auroras. But there's always a model and a price point that gets you into the game. We shall see how well Visconti competes when I get my new Visconti Mirage and compare it to a Breeze, Van Gogh, and a Rembrandt in a couple of weeks. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.